All right. Welcome, everyone. I see people are still kind of getting in the room here, so we'll just let everyone get a chance to kind of get settled in before we kick it off. Remy, are we, we live right now? We are live right now. All right. It's almost game on, huh? It is. It is. You know, when Thank I do these with our groups, Remy, I'm used to seeing everybody on the side, right? And I can see the faces right. and engage. So this this panelist format is going to be a little bit different. I feel like I'm talking to just you guys, but we got a whole world out there, don't we? We definitely do. Yeah, I'm normally used to <laughs> seeing the faces pop up. Right now, I just see a number at the bottom of my screen that's jumping up pretty quickly. We got 126 people so far here with us. Welcome. All right, Remy, if right, we do this again, I'll, I'll, I want some pump up music if we do this again, okay? Yeah, we need a little, little music going on here as people enter the room. Like a walkout song, yeah? yeah? Yeah, there you go. Ooh, that'd be a tough choice. What would I pick? I'm going to think about that and get back to you, Lewis. <laughs> Use that for your sales screen celebration, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a shameless plug, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think, Lewis? Should we just kick it off? Let's do it. Absolutely. All right. All right. All right. First off, thank you everyone for participating here right now. Um, today's topic is how goodly use gamification to boost their productivity. I'm sure a lot of people here on the call today are used to gamification or have seen it, like in the fitness industry with the Fit Fitbits, the Apple Watches, the Pelotons, and really see the effects of gamification in the fitness world. So we're super excited here to talk about how we use these same elements in the sales world here today. So I want to just start off by introducing the, the team here today. With us from Sales Screen here, we have our very own VP of Sales, Lewis. You want to say a couple words? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Lewis Wallage. I oversee the global sales team here at Sales Screen. Um, absolutely obsessed with gamifying every metric. Um, and my background um, is in employee motivation and driving performance through culture. Uh, so it's nice to meet you. All. All right, and with us from Goodly, we have the EVP of production, Josh. Hello, Remy. Hey, Lewis, and all those that are out there. Uh, Josh Harmatz. My current title is EVP of, of Mortgage Production, a.k.a. Head of Sales uh, for Goodly. I've been managing teams of inside sales reps for 21 years now. So a lot of cycles and a lot of experience with this concept that we now call gamification. I never thought of it that way in, in the past. So I was interested to talk about the subject here as, as uh, I was brought in. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you, Randy. Yeah, no, gamification is definitely a new world. When I was new world, kind of like buzz world, that's kind of been more and more um, integrated in the last couple yeah. of years. When I was dropping it like five years ago, people thought I was just making up a word. and was like, hey, you can't just squeeze two words together. <laughs> um, but now, Josh, that we've been a partner with us a couple of years now, were you familiar with gamification before you teamed up with us? Can you tell us a little bit about your kind of gamification journey? Yeah, I mean, I think first you got to recognize that as humans, we're born into a game. Everything we've done from childhood, especially up into the workplace, and I, I think everybody in this call is in sales, so we have that competitive nature at heart. So yeah, I think it is a buzzword in a lot of ways, but this is already inherent in us, and Wi-Fi gravity, right? If this is what we're born with, if this is how we're wired, how can we bolster and and, and move, that, move that forward? So yeah, the truth is I didn't get introduced to this concept of gamification in the workplace by sales screen. It was a competitor of theirs. Uh, we we're heading down the path with another company to do a similar thing. And I'm sure we'll get into that, why, why we chose sales screen and why I even wanted to move things and make this investment in, in, in time more than anything to put this together. Um, but we're headed down that path with a competitor, right? To say, Hey, let's, let's get this into a place that we can control within the sales group really gamify things in a much better way than we were doing before. I'm confident everybody on this call, because we're all in sales, I think, in, in one way or another, is using some element of gamification. Having a platform that puts it all together is really where we've, we've seen things excel. I mean, if you think about it, we, we can't use the fitness tracker 
analogy, right? We count everything in life. That that's what's happening around us from sleep trackers to fitness trackers to calorie counters. Shoot, I started a date tracker because I wanted to make sure <laughs> I need to make sure I'm doing enough dates with me and my wife, right? So I had to start counting those things. Um, so we're, take advantage, right? Like we're already wired that way. And yeah, anyways, just love the the concept here to be able to motivate and engage in much better ways. Yeah, I love the why why fight gravity. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it wasn't necessarily a hard decision to move forward with gamification during the time because it was a rather new idea some years back when we started. Was there any like hurdles to come over being like a trailblazer with it? I sure don't feel like a trailblazer in any way. I, I feel like this is something I've been doing and we've been doing in this industry since the dawn of time uh, at, at its most basic level. Right. It's most basic level. What are you doing? You're showing the results of how you perform to an individual. You're showing them how they perform amongst their peers and how the organization as a whole is doing towards its goals. And I think that's just inherent in what we do in sales leadership. It sure should be. If you're not doing that and, and not focused in that area, boy, you're missing the boat. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want people that come into work, grab a cup of coffee, talk to a coworker, check their email, and then start thinking about what they're having for lunch. To me, that's for the that's for that's for the birds, right? Like we want a motivated and engaged sales force that comes in and is ready to dominate, that can operate all day in that peak performance state. And it's really tough. Our industry is really tough. I'm in mortgage space and have been in finance and mortgage steadily for for those 21 years, um, and it's very difficult, especially with interest rates in the last few years. So, you know, it's interesting because. When we came into sales screen, we've been clients since October of 2021. I looked that up, by the way, just so I could get that right here for this, <laughs> this conversation. So we've been with you guys two and a half years, uh, very, very happily. And it was a very busy time. It was one of the best times, one of the best rate environments we've had in mortgage at that time. And I was probably the worst time to have launched this because we were so busy. And it's just really hard to get everybody's attention, get people focused. Uh, at the same time, there's no bad time to make this kind of improvement. So I'm really glad we did it. Um, I was surprised by how easy it was to get set up. You know, one of the frustrations that drove me to this, to two sales screen, uh, it, or really to this to this space, it's just my frustration with our business intelligence, uh, utilizing Salesforce and Encompass, our loan origination system, Tableau, and the list goes on of places that I would get different data from. It was really choppy. You know, everything was in Excel and it kind of, you know, death to Excel, right? We, we got as, as we moved into to sales screen here, but really didn't have a consistent platform and, and truly back to your question, Remy, a way to truly gamify that data and to really leverage this modern approach. The same reason why our kids are addicted to Fortnite. And, you know, I got into Boom Beach like four years ago with my son. I remember that. I just all of a sudden got hooked in this thing. Like, why am I keep playing this thing and wasting my time? And I needed to get to the next level and the next status. Uh, and these are things that we're just wired for, right? So let's take advantage of that as sales leaders. Let's bring that into our sales culture here and allow people to flourish because of it in a more meaningful way and financially typically more lucrative for them as well. You know, the, the whole idea here is getting the most out of the time that we're allocating, right? That's That's what it's about. You know, why is it that on one given month, a salesperson performs at X? And the next given month, they perform at Y. Well, in our environment, things are very consistent, right, all, all, at times. So you're, you're talking about the same leads, the same products, the same programs, yet they're night and day performance over a large swath of data. You always got to have a sample size before you make judgments, right? Why? What's the difference? Psychology. It's all mindset. What did they decide they're going to do today versus what did they hope that they would accomplish and how did we keep them motivated and inspired and foster the right sales culture, a shared sales culture for performance so that people can really be in that peak performance state at all times? And I think that's our job more than anything else as sales leaders and sales coaches and sales mentors is to help people perform. And often you're having to eliminate roadblocks and it could be technology and operations. We can get in all that if, if, if you want. But at, at <laughs> heart, I think this gamification concept uh, really speaks to what we should be doing as as sales leaders uh, in any given day. Sorry. Yeah, so I think a lot of. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Remy. You said um, obviously gamification didn't exist as soon as sales screen came along. It was there way before, and it'll be there way after, right? When you um, before you implemented sales screen, what were you doing in terms of gamification? How were you like 
gamifying the metrics? How are you making it exciting for your, for the big, for the guys in your team? Yeah, man. So metrics is one part of it. And the answer was Excel and ad hoc reports from our various systems that we were working and then amalgamating all those together. Like I got really good at Excel. Right. And now I feel like uh, the kid that used to handwrite that's now typing and you can't read my handwriting. My Excel skills have gone way down because I don't need it anymore. You know, I've got everything here in this this, this great, beautiful tool in, in front of us. Um, but that metrics, that's just one component of it. I see yeah. sales screen and we use it. I call it uh, good stats, by the way. We've kind of rebranded it in, internally for ourselves. No offense to you guys, but I'm not interested in branding you to my, 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 my staff here. Right. Like, we want to have our, our own thing. <laughs> And so that's what we call it, good stats. But I think of it as a really an all-encompassing sales culture tool. And I'll give you a great example, Lewis. I had an old office uh, before I, I merged. I've been with my, my company here 11 years now. We launched Consumer Direct in mortgage uh, for, for the business 11 years ago. And I used to have this hallway that everybody had to enter to get onto the sales floor. Okay, And I built out this 15-foot long tunnel. They think about the football player that just that just comes out on the field, right? And they're rah-rah and they're excited and they know they're on the field of play, right? That's their dojo. That's your protected area. And right? it's not about what you had for dinner last night or what you're doing tomorrow. Like we're on the sales field right now. Let's go. It is game time. And I had this thing outfitted with six screens, three on each side. And this is like old technology, right? So the, the cords and you should see what I had to do to put this thing together. But it's to help people get in that peak performance state to know you're here. Let's go. So we use sales screen, good stats, for all the TVs on the sales floor to try to do that same thing, right? The current, these current buildings I have, we have four locations. I can't build out these crazy tunnels anymore, right? And it is 2024. Things are a little bit different today. But we think of it as really an all-encompassing tool and really the features within the system that we've slowly built up, right? You launched it with, with the metrics and the, the gamification part, but all that's there. You want individuals to see how they're performing real time throughout the day. How are they doing to compare to their peers on their team, their peers within their division or their company? Where do they rank? Where do they stack? Uh, as a sales leader, you're looking at this constantly throughout the day, and you're pushing people to, to, the, to the site here, really managing your KPIs. And we've got to be really careful how many of those we're going to look at. I think sales screen has like 26 widgets we can put on the page, if I recall. And we're constantly modifying them based on what are our goals for that month or that quarter. What are we driving towards right now? What are we going to shine a flashlight on that we want to improve? Because sales has to be a continuous improvement model, right? Are we ever satisfied with what we did last month? No, you want to celebrate it and high five, but you're back in the gym the next day, so to speak, right? To me, a great sales culture is what have you done for me lately, right? Every For us, it's a lot of month. We kind of work off of a month. Other sales environments might be a quarter or annual Really, if you're not winning every day and every week and every month, it's, it's those small bite-sized chunks. Based on our sales cycles and mortgage, we can kind of do it that way uh, in, in working with our customers and the time frame it takes to commit and the amount of volume that we're doing. Um, but really able to flash a light on that, I, I think, helps a lot. So I don't know, I'll pause there, man. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> That's great. No, it's, it's good to hear that you, almost before you came into sales screen, before you started kind of gamifying a 2.0, 2, 2.0, if you will, you were already kind of bringing people into this. You had in that clear vision of how you wanted to get your team into this peak um, performance culture mindset. And um, maybe that's why the leap wasn't that big for you when you're a couple of years back, looked at sales screen, because you're already out here looking for this. This made sense. Did you see like a big impact going from what you had to kind of, uh, um, 2.0 in it, if you will. Oh, it's huge. When it comes to like performance and culture. Yeah. I mean, it's huge in so many areas. Depends. You can answer that question from different levels. And I, I got a feeling among your participants, you probably have different levels of folks on the call from your executive leadership. And what is my organization doing? And am I steering this ship in the right direction? Do I have any big holes that I need to go plug right now today in this moment? Uh, they're going to look at things a little bit different. Your frontline sales managers, your second level sales managers that are really looking at individual contributors and individual performers are going to look at the data a little bit differently. And they're going to want to see different things throughout the throughout the day, throughout the week. And your individual contributors that are on the call that they want to have something more, something transparent, something where this concept of fair play in sales can really take hold. And you can see what everybody's doing in a transparent nature, I think is just crucial here. Uh, I've already lost track of your question, by the way, Remy, but yeah, you know, um, 
you know, the idea of having all this in one place that could serve everybody's needs with different dashboards, that was really the place we started here. Um, I think you'd have to give a lot of thought to the change management in your business, because to your point, this is something I've been doing and we've been doing since the dawn of time. It feels like this just took it to the next level. This meaning sales screen, right? It, it helped us go to the next level to professionalize what we're doing. And that was a big part of this, right? How professional is that when you're color coding and highlighting Excel? And sending those out constantly and sorting and formatting like anybody can do that. That's not modern. That's not going to give you that wow factor among your staff that's going to help with your culture and your retention. Right. This is a retention tool because people when they're comparing what a competitor might have and and they're not as together as what you've put together as a sales leader or, or an executive, you help stand apart. We've had staff that have left and they've wanted to come back because where they went didn't have tools like this, right? And, and I'm not going to boast and say, hey, our, our retention is this because of sales screen. I think that would be misleading. I think this is a very key part, though, to our overall package of how we operate and what we do. And I, I do credit a lot of that to, to what we put together here based on, on what, what your platform does for us and allows. Yeah, great. And I mean, now more than ever, it's probably a hard time to retain talent in the mortgage space specifically with the high interest. So having kind of that little extra tool there to kind of just help build in, I mean, retention, culture, performance, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Once you get all those three pieces right, that's when you really have a, have a good team. Yeah, I'll, I'll team tell you, any... just, let, let me just make a point on that really quick because yeah, the mortgage space, it's been pretty brutal the last few years. So what happens naturally, psychologically, you're comparing what you did to what you're doing now, right? How many, how many customers you helped, how many families you made a difference with, paychecks, things like that. What did I do to what am I doing to doing now? The trick to that is to change it, change the game, change the conversation within your own mind and us as sales leaders within our organization to how are you doing compared to your peers given the same set of circumstances, right? You can still find, you can find the wins, the small wins, even though production is lower because it's tougher. It's not about comparing to your best you ever did. You might not ever reach that based on the, the environment that's around you. But how are you doing compared to your peers when things are all fair play? That's what's huge. And it doesn't matter the environment around and what you used to do. It's what are you doing right now and how do we, how do we engage somebody in that way? And that can help kind of change that psychology to where – you could fight, start finding satisfaction in what you're doing today. Start finding the wins and find the the performance based on the current normal. So, sorry, I just want yeah. to jump in real quick right now. Yeah, no, that's a it's a good point. And as you say, like being able to come in and kind of get that everyday wins. And I, what kind of feedback are you getting from your team, the LO, the people there that have to go in and kind of push through these hard times? Yeah, well, I mean, specific to sales screen, you, you, most of our mortgage bankers have three monitors set up at, at their desk. A lot of different things we have to, to work through in the mortgage process. Uh, very consistently, I mean, I, I'd venture to say 75% of the screens, if I walk around the Sacramento office, which I'm in today, I saw it in the Texas office I was in yesterday in Dallas. You'll see on one of those monitors, their personal view in their dashboard pulled up from sales screen. Okay? They use it most often first and foremost, to track what have they done in their day, right? Every day they have performance goals. And we talk about these things constantly. How many calls have I taken? How have I performed today? You know, the metrics go on from there, but they're using it as their own personal tracker, first and foremost. And, you know, then you go to what have I done for the week, the month, where am I at to my, my commission goals, where am I at to compare my peers, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing that surprised me considerably is what brought us to sales grade. I don't know if it's a good pl place to talk about that, Remy, with the reward store coins. <laughs> no, absolutely. Go for it. I know Lewis would like the conversation with his background in rewards and recognition. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it's become my favorite part of, of sales screen is, is the reward store. It's just fun, man. It's really fun. So when we made the decision, what, October 2020, and again, I looked it up. Uh, to, to move forward to sales screen, I, we started on this path with a competitor of sales. It's not appropriate. I'm not going to get into that, but we ended up pausing and saying, let's do it. Let's be smart here. Let's, let's ju jump into the first thing we're excited about because it was a really good platform. I was excited about it. 
um, and was ready to move forward, built like a good relationship, with the CEO of the company and, and thought we were moving forward. Someone very wisely said, hey, Josh, just pause and look around, right, to take the blinders off. So we did a full competitive analysis, looked at every company in the space. And I then picked the top three and had the salesperson from each company present to our sales leadership team. Okay. So we had a big conference. We're out in Denver and I had them present on a big Zoom call. And I basically said, why should we go with you versus your, your competitors and peers? And I'm big at horse racing, right? So I'll ask the tough question. <laughs> well, this company says they're better at you because of this. What are your thoughts on that? Right. And I, and I, I pinned them all out. The thing that stood apart more than anything else, and there was more than one reason, okay, but was this reward store concept. Nobody else had this concept of digital currency. And it hit me like a freight train, right? Because in a couple of ways, one, in my whole career, I've been big on rewards and recognition, okay? Like I could talk a lot about our lifetime achievement program and our monthly and quarterly sales performance programs that, that we run, but I've always really done it my way, okay? Now, you know, tons of feedback, collaboration, that's not what I mean, but like I would give out trophies, crystals. I, I've done it all over, over many a years, like really cool stuff, things that were horrible ideas, all that. Uh, but every you know month, quarter, et cetera, you'd get a trophy. I realized, right, like an 80, I felt like such an 80 to realize this so late. You know, some people, they just don't care about that stuff, right? They'd rather have something else. Others are maniacs about it, right? I mean, there's a sales guy here that's got an entire trophy case now, right? Just that that's his thing. For me personally, you know, I started in, in sales, like I think every sales leader did, and earned my way to where, where I got. My first year in the business, year and a half actually I was selling. And I look at my office right now, and there's two trophies I kept. The, there's two that were really meaningful to me over all the things that, that I got. And I, I, I rethought that and said, well, why do we keep giving trophies? Instead, why don't I give them the option? So now what we do, and we launched this a while ago, is I'll give you the coin equivalent, the digital currency equivalent of what we would spend on the trophy, the engraving, and the shipping. You then have the choice because you gave the, got the coins to go into the reward store, click the button, says order the trophy. Or you might be the person, ah, I don't need all that, right? Or I got my one trophy, I don't want a whole case. Now you can save those coins up for something bigger, something better, something different. You have the choice, even experiences we have in the reward store there. So that's just one example of why I love the, the, the reward store. But that's really what stood out to the sales managers. They, they saw the light for all the competitions we run, all the spiffs that we do to move it all to this digital currency concept. Let people choose what they want to buy and what they want to do with it. Let them save up for bigger things. Let them shop. Let them dream. And then what you learn about with sales screen, if, if, if you're – if you're new to it, is that you could battle. People can actually challenge others and they can bet. And, you know, I, I'm not a real better a gambling person, but others love it. And that's one important thing about sales can one premise here that I, I think everybody needs to understand. It's got something for everybody. Right? You have people on your sales team and we all know it that roll their eyes, right? When you're sitting in a sales meeting or you're rolling out a competition, it's just not for them. They don't care about it. You have others that love things like the badges and achievements in here because they geek out on that stuff. Maybe they don't even know why. They just see it's something I can achieve and accomplish and do it. I wanna go do that. They'll collect these badges and achievements. They're in their mind like, oh, I need to get five in a week because I haven't got that one yet. And that's something for that person. And, you know, I could go on, but it's got something for everybody at heart. Every salesperson is a competitor. Whether they want to, whether they admit it to you or not, they wanna do better than the person to the left and the person to the right of them. And hopefully you have the right sales culture. And I think you could foster that with a system like this where they're still rooting for each other and you still care about the people around you and you lead with your heart and you lead with love. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can relate with the rewards. That's being also my favorite thing in our platform here. And I also see it like from other aspects where uh, you have like your credit card points, right? Your Starbucks reward systems, and you see all these, like your flight mileage points, right? You see people yeah. gravitate towards it as you start collecting these little little nuggets that can become a free flight. And that just free flight, how much, I mean, it's it's always nice when you can use your points to get that free flight. It feels like you, you're, you've kind of earned it. Josh, I had a quick yeah, question totally. for you. Like, cause for anyone that doesn't know my background, like before joining sales screen, was in reward and recognition for about 15 or 20 years. So I'm absolutely obsessed with the concept of it. In your reward store, I mean, you talked about, you know, giving people choice. What are some of the ideas you've done in the reward store? I mean, obviously, like, the, the, and it can range from anything, from gift cards to grab, 
getting someone to buy you a coffee or whatever you want. So there are any cool things that you've done with it? Um, yeah, they're, 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 I mean, we think we've got some cool things in there. See what you guys think about it. But first I want to mention, uh, I, I'm, I've treated the reward store to be a little bit self-serving. So I want to be upfront about that. Meaning I try to put things in there that can brand the company or brand an experience with the company. So I'm not a big gift card guy at all. In fact, only one time we did a flash sale for gift cards. Okay. Uh, I want experiences and I want things with good leap on it and only premium stuff. Like no crap goes in there. All right. It's good. Like it's Travis Matthew jackets and, and sweatshirts, you know, it's, it's Nike air maxes that are in there custom with good leap as much as I can, you know, we've done X, X, Xboxes and around the holidays, we'll throw in holiday things, Valentine's day. You know, we did a flash sale for Valentine's stuff, by the way, I'm dropping things in and pulling them out. Right. What do the what do the sneakers app do and what did Nike do for the culture? Like learn off these things that you see around you and take advantage of them. Limited time only. Right. Limited time. This is in the reward store that's there and people get excited about it. Recent uh, a Vitamix blender we just put in that's in there for for two weeks. I'm going to have it shipped to the office and put a good leap sticker on the back of it. Because that's that's what I want to do. Uh, I want to brand our company, I'll brand our experiences. I think one of the most unique things we've done though, Lewis, is the experience. We hooked up with a travel agency and we put experiences in the store. So they can go shop based on the number of coins they've earned or save up for. Hopefully they're looking out to next year. Say next year, I want to be at 32,500 coins. That gives me the silver experience and I can take my whole family to Disneyland in Orlando for five days. I want to That's take my point. wife to Fiji for a week. We sent a guy to Scottsdale last, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Scotland last month on a golf trip from coins he earned over time through spiffs, incentives, lifetime achievements, and, and sales awards that's there. We've given out, and I looked this up, 3.5 million coins in two and a half years. I've had redeemed 2.9 million coins in through our reward store, right? The really cool stuff. Incredible. And that's the thing, right? Then it can become really aspirational. Like you might get yeah, some of the folks yeah. that just want to go and pick up a ba limited edition baseball cap, like this one on my skeleton back here. Or you're going to have other people that are going to save those coins up and they're going to- Oh yeah, let me show you one. Look. Yeah, yeah. Look, everybody knows that if you're into hats, you're into the Milan hats. That's the big thing. They're like 70 bucks for these Milan yep. hats. So, you know, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I got to put that <laughs> Yeah, yeah I got the Goodly go. badge on the side of the Milan hat, right? And and just like, this is my favorite hat. Um, it's the best one to wear, best fitting. And, you know, you get different head sizes, people can order them. So, you know, you got to be thoughtful about quantities and inventory. So there's definitely a strategy. I mean, frankly, everything you should be doing as a sales leader. But, you know, just put some thought into that for sure. And, and I think it'd be, a, it'd be a, a really confident, it'd be a big hit with your teams like it was for ours. We didn't see any other company at anything like this out there. Love it. So last question here before we jump into the Q&A part of it. Um, yeah. When we're out talking to companies, there's sometimes always a little hesitation bringing in new tech because they like, yeah. how big of a list of it? <laughs> what kind of support do we get? Like, how is this all going to work? Um, can you speak a little bit to your experience kind of getting going with sales screen and how that implementation onboarding process was for you? Yeah, sure. And and Remy, I don't know that you guys get this because you're in software. Maybe there's other software salespeople on the call, but we get hit up. I get hit up. I mean, like daily, I'm not exaggerating daily to sell us some new software and everything's a subscription model. And it's really hard from a P and L standpoint, running a sales group to make decisions on what to purchase and to be careful that you haven't added up four or five of these things. Are you really getting use out of it? You know, what's your cost per scene per head? So I think there's some folks out there that might might identify with me on that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you got to make your own decisions on where that falls. I'll tell you this, though. I mean, if, if if you're not ready to do it now, you should really set a goal or a target for yourself. If you don't have a gamification platform of some sort, if sales screen doesn't speak to you and you go with the competitors, other good ones in the space, I felt like this was the best value as far as one, how much it costs and what we get for it. Um, and I haven't even touched on some of the other things that we, we really utilize and leverage a lot or some of the things that I'm, we're going to be doing at the end of the year. So we've been really selective of which features to roll out when. You don't want to overwhelm your, your your sales team. But let me go back to your question, Remy. Um, so yeah, well, how do we make that that decision to do it? Well, it seemed natural because we were already doing these things just very poorly, 
right? With Excel and the other things we talked about, putting in one space was good. Implementation truly was easier than I thought it would be. And usually it goes the other way around, right? You always have the company and the software sales, how, how fast it is and how easy it is. And that rarely ever turns out to be the case. The key to this though is, at least for me, and you know, I recommend this for others, that you have a super smart sales support person to help you. Either you're going to do it if you're a really small business, which I would have done in the past, or you have somebody at your hip that could just own and dominate the system on your end. I wouldn't advocate relying on sales screen. Not that they're not amazing. Like our rep Marie, she's incredible. And, and she's the second person we worked with and like truly been blown away, which by the way, I, I don't think I mentioned, it's why I'm doing this conversation to begin with. Hey, I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm not even mentioning my company name really. Like there's, there's nothing in this for me. I'm not doing it. I'm just a super fan of sales screen and really, really grateful to Sindre and what he's built uh, and the whole team here. They're just they're good people. They're responsive. They care. They do what they say they're going to do. And I can't say that for a lot of my other vendors, truthfully. Uh, but anyways, have somebody super smart on your team that can just engross themselves in the administration of this because there are so many features you can get into if you want. I think sales screen will help get you set up out of the box, but I, I, I kind of took it over with, with Hannah on my team right away. Say, hey, we just want to learn how to be our own admins. Frankly, I didn't know if I could trust sales screen to do a good job. Usually I don't trust the software sales people because they let me down so much in the world. Uh, in this case, it turned out that you, you kind of can, like they really know their stuff and they're good and they help, but uh, we learned the system and we've got a really good support team that runs it. So when we have a sales VP that wants to change around a dashboard or has an idea for a contest, uh, we have our own internal group we can email and they've learned the system really well. I'd say it took them about six months to be experts, but it wasn't at the point of launch. We knew enough to be dangerous. The other big user setup part you need is just your databases. Um, the, you know, the thing I really haven't touched on is our, our prior BI tools, which, which should have been great. They weren't consistent and weren't real time. You know, I constantly had these lag in our databases. Certain metrics would pay, take an hour. Other things were on a 30 minute refresh cycle. Other things were once a day they'd refresh. So to do the tech work, to connect the databases that we wanted to sales screen. And I, I, I really, I can't even, I'm sure it's happened. I can't even think of a time sales screen has been down. As long as you're connecting your database to it, which they've got all dialed in and figured out, they're really easy and help you guys, Remy. Like we're really good working with our tech team to get those databases connected. Um, that was the biggest thing, right? Then it's just, how do you want to set it up? You know, there's so many options here. What contest do you want to lead with? What do you want to put in your reward store? And you got some things to think through. So I wouldn't try to tackle everything right at the launch. I'd be really selective of what you want to launch with. Make sure you have the buy-in from your team before you ever do it. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Uh, you've got to make sure you ditch everything else and that your whole team is committed. Like we, I, had, I made people sign a pact, death to Excel. <laughs> We're not going to be sending screenshots from Salesforce or these other areas. And then I had to be the one, you know, Paul and Jason, my sales leaders and, and directors, they had to be the ones to really drive this change in. So but just be thoughtful about the change management within the sales team and sales culture so you get the result you want. If you shortcut that, you're going to be sitting there six months from now and people are going to be half using it. You, you won't be where you want to be. Uh, makes sense. Shout out, Hannah and Marie. Big time. Um, all right. They're the goats. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. I see a couple questions here that we can jump on. Um, are there any unique challenges or considerations Goodly faces in leveraging gamification within its industry? You know, our, our industry is heavily regulated. So, gosh, I can't think of one that relates necessarily to gamification and how we're using sales screen per se. I mean, we don't, this isn't customer facing, so I don't have those compliance issues to worry about. Um, gosh, I, I can't think of something there. I don't know, ask a follow-up question if you can. Maybe, maybe I'm missing what they're trying to get out of it, but. Yeah. Right. So, can can you provide any examples of successful gamification initiatives Goodleap has had? Yeah, I mean the fun ones are the contests more than anything, and the competitions yeah. within the system. Um, so we we give a budget to each of our frontline managers so they can run their own spiffs within their team, and the budget is based on coins. That's the other beauty. You're not dealing as much with expense reports and gift cards or adding stuff to paychecks, et cetera. It's through the reward store most, most often. When they win a competition or winning coins, they can spend it as they want. 
Sometimes we'll still do, you know, cash things where it's added to, to a paycheck. There's a time and a place for that. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, the manager has their own budget so they can do what they think is needed. You've got to give people some autonomy and some trust to run their, run their, run their teams. Then we'll do larger, you know, set sales center wise. We have four centers here where people are competing against each other. Um, and, you know, I give a lot of examples. Like, since you wanted a specific example, we have a, a tradition in this company. I was here before we came aboard. This company has been around for 20 years, a mortgage company. We launched Consumer Direct 11 years ago of an annual all-star trip, which I think is pretty typical among sales environments, right? Of having these annual reward trips, presidents, clubs, they're called all kinds of different things. And it's great because we run it through sales screen, right? They get two points for helping a family out, funding a loan, and one point if it meets another criteria isn't pertinent here. And it's really simple. Any given day, and it's it's on one of the six rotating things on the sales boards. I'll usually bring it up in every one of my my meetings with all sales, which I do religiously twice a month, and we'll see where that tracks. But they pull it up constantly. They can see where they're at. It shows them did they go up or down for that given day. And we're at the tail end of this thing. So just yesterday, I was addressing this with all sales, showcasing how one of our loan officers in Texas, where I just was, one of our bankers there, moved up 10 spots with four closings on that day. And it's a really close competition. This might be the closest one we've ever had in running this for, you know, me 11 years, 20 years for the company of who's going to get those final spots to make the top 10. Um, you know, it's a nice colorful background. It's got imagery of the location that we're going to be going to. And I think it's a really good way to, to, to kind of gamify that longer term. But, you, you know, I, think, I do see sales leaders make the mistake of going too long out on these things. People work really well with short sprints. Today, this week, two day, three day, and it's just so easy to launch these things in the system and then give away coins to win, which they can go spend how they want. Yeah, that's perfect how you guys have it. You guys have enabled the frontline managers and they have their own little coin budget. They can go in and they can motivate their team, have these short spiffs kind of competitions that can get them motivated. And then you have these overarching larger competitions that are more strategic from a leadership level, like president's club kind of running on top of all that. Um, Lewis, any last questions from you before we wrap it up here? I had a real quick question. I want to just like ask you about this. This isn't a sales screen specific one, but often when we think about gamification, it often appeals to the killers, the people that are sitting at the top of the leaderboards, the people that always win and win and win and win and win anyway. Do you guys put in any strategies? Do you have any like ways in which you engage people like your middle and bottom performance, people that could do need that extra push, need that extra motivation? Like what are your strategies for that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll start with accountability on that end. And by the way, top top performers, they, they can be a different animal. So I, I, I totally agree with you. You know, those that have the confidence and have the track record of what they've done. And it's a, it's a little bit of a different audience in a way. But what I love about the gamification tool that we're using here with, with sales screen is the accountability part of it. It's so easy to drill into to look at a trend chart and see what somebody's been doing in any particular metric. It's so easy to have a one-on-one -on -one with them, whether you're in person, in, in, in an office or on Zoom together, and they can see what they've done. They can see where they've improved. Sometimes those low to mid performers, Lewis, they just need accountability. Yeah. They may not get there on their own. The only reason that they may perform in that month or that quarter, and maybe the leader that's driving them towards those numbers. Right. We, we all know that we have that sometimes in our environments, people that you know, they're, they're sometimes going through the motions. And it's hard to recruit. It's hard to retain people. You can't just write people like that off by any means. You've got to have an attitude that you're here working. I chose you and you're choosing to be here. We're going to succeed and win together. You're under my wing and you're not going to fail because if you fail, I failed and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let that happen. This allows you to keep your thumb on the person and really drive those things home. I, I believe in in checking in. A frontline manager should be three times at a desk every day. Nowadays, it's you know sometimes it's Zoom and that can mean just a touch. So if you're touching that person three times in the day, you're talking to them at 9 a.m., you're checking in at 2, checking back in at 5, often we're in sales screen. We're show, showcasing where they at in the day in a, a specific area that we've shined a flashlight on that says, hey, this is going to get done today. It's not a question of what are you going to accomplish. It's a conversation of what is going to happen. And that's that approach. And I think it really helps with that, that group of people. 
Did, did that, is that where you're looking at me? Goes that answer your question, Lewis? Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm on the same page with this one as well, because it's easy to assume someone that isn't performing isn't performing because they can't or they don't care. It's about just giving them an opportunity, giving them a platform and give them visibility on what good looks like, right? Yeah. And, and then making sure it's happening. Like it just, yeah. you know, staying on it. You know, it, yeah. it, it's not, if you leave people, if you leave some people to their own devices, uh, they won't get the same result than if you're there with them partnering together. And you just got to believe in that as a sales leader, you make a difference, that you matter, that your work, your work will change the end result. And if you believe in that as a sales leader, then you got to have tools like this at your fingertips. If not, I, I frankly, I don't know why you're there. That's a brilliant last question and answer here. Um, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in here today. Hope everyone got a little bit to take home with them. Um, if not, if, here's a great one for you. Why fight gravity? <laughs> um, thank you all for <laughs> thank you all for attending this today. And yeah, we're looking forward to hosting more webinars here and of course sharing the content we we've brought out here for to everyone here today. Thank you again, Josh, for joining us. Thank you, Lewis. It's been a you great conversation. And thank you guys so much. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, good speaking with you, Rami. Take care, Lewis. See you, everybody.